Okay. Let's take a deep breath. Lots to talk about. This is the second, and uh, we're going to run these shows all the way through to the end of the college football season and the NFL season, of course, as well. Uh, Last week, we got started. Uh, We took the time to go over the trends that we weren't able to get to on our college football show. So that's already available on the site. Obviously, if you're looking at this show, you know that the college football show with Mark Lawrence uh, and I uh, already posted every Thursday. Unless I should say that sometimes we have to reschedule for Friday. Uh, I do want to say that if anybody out there uh, would like to see us do a live show, like this show live, not to say that Mark and I can't do a live show, but if anybody out there, all, if any of our viewers out there would like to see us do a live show, let us know. Uh, because uh, in order to do a live show, it's a little bit more to it, but also um, it's live. So we get to interact with you guys one-on-one in the chat area and so forth. So if you want to if you want to do a live show, great. I also want to let all our viewers know, and I'm going to be spreading this around for the next few weeks, but we have a lot of big things happening on the channel. Um, we are going to be spreading out. Okay, I shouldn't say on the channel, but we're gonna the channel is soon to be. You're soon going to see the channel, and then you're going to see offshoot channels of the Prime Sports Network channel family. So what we're going to be doing real soon, and it could be starting in a matter of days, hours, uh, that instead of having one channel, we are going to that that encompasses all the sports that we cover. Uh, we are going to have multiple channels where we're going to have, say, a motorsports channel and a golf channel and an our lads channel, uh, so forth and so on. So horse racing. So And again, this all depends. So, some of them we're working on immediately. We're going to put them out. Some of them we might just say, okay, you know what? Prime Sports Network, the channel. If you want to watch, say, horse racing or something else, this is where you got to go. But there will be, and we're working on this right now, there will be multiple channels coming real soon. And so as soon as they're available, and it only takes same day, of course, to set them up, we will let you know. Okay. Well, and, and, and you can also find me on the Rutgers football channel after every Rutgers football game. And if you don't know I'm a Rutgers fan by now, then uh, I guess you're missing out. Uh, being a New Jersey resident, that's the deal, okay? So I'm suckered in. And it doesn't mean I'm not a, a fan of other teams. I am. Uh, so, you know, you should know by now, Rutgers fan, born in New Jersey, native, Michigan fan, because when I grew up, you just couldn't root for Rutgers. So that's college football, Jet fan, NFL. Now, let's go over, and we're going to save the NFL like we did last week. Good start in the NFL, by the way, so I'm real happy about that, but it's only one week. Okay, I tell you what we'll do first of all. Let's go ahead and post the picks. Here are the picks. Here's our, here are our college football picks. I did not have them. I did have the double-digit and the upset. Actually, just the double-digit upsets, I believe, we posted on the show yesterday, and that was it. So, oh, this is back again? So, um and it had a lot to do with just things. Things are just moving so fast right now, and if you and, and now you know why. So I just didn't have enough time. I didn't want to just throw picks on there that I was going to regret. So I, I spent a little bit more time, and here we are. Okay, so those are the picks. Let's go over quickly everything going on in college football that we may have either covered on the show yesterday or we did not have time for. Okay, so I've got Arkansas this week. Mainly, I like the way they've been, you know, gutting it out lately. Even though they're on a what five-game losing streak, uh, they uh, they they were within three points of Alabama with a whole what ten minutes to go, and could have had that big upset there, but couldn't put it together. They're desperate for a win. They need wins to go bowling. Uh, I, I still think they're going to figure a way to get that done. And if that's the case, they got to beat Mississippi State. And Mississippi State, meanwhile, not a fan of. Said that in the beginning of the year. There's no way this coach is coming back. Never should have just given him the job. But I can maybe understand it. It gives him a whole year to find the right guy. Uh, But they've dropped five straight covers. And um, 
uh, they also clobbered Arkansas last year. So there's a little bit of motivation for the Hogs in this one minus the six. Um, we talked about the Missouri and uh, South Carolina game on the show. We talked about the Tennessee-Alabama game. I do want to add, though, uh, that – and I know we, we bash Joe Milton a lot, and that's an easy – an, he's an easy guy to bash. I should know as a Michigan fan. But what, what I really want to kind of elaborate on is the reason I like Tennessee is because uh, th- th- this is not like even last year. This is a completely different Alabama team and now a Tennessee team. They're well coached by Josh Heupel. So they got both teams are well coached, but th- th- they don't have the quarterback, the flashy quarterback. So this is about defense. And and I think Tennessee's defense is on par with Alabama's. And the, but the big difference is Alabama's offensive line is terrible. This is the, I think the worst offensive line I've seen at Alabama since I don't even know when. I mean, you look at it, they're 129th in sacks allowed combined with the fact that they're 76th in rushing a game. What does that tell you? All right, so they got a bad offensive line. Tennessee should be able to take advantage of it, and that is why uh, I like the points. We're going to get into a game like this, then I'm taking the points. Um, but, you know, you kind of figure, yeah, Alabama will find a way to win. We'll see. You know, maybe Tennessee gets it done. It is quite po- – I mean, I will throw a few bucks on the money line, but I'm just not going to put it in my formula where I'm going to throw 100 bucks on it. Okay, the other uh, game that we – now, look, we're – Mark and I have a difference in this. Mark's going with Auburn. I'm going with Ole Miss. But I just don't like what I, I – I'm not going to use some of the – Mark is a major as well. He should be because he's been he, – he, he's, he's built a, a great empire over this. Major stats guy, trend guy and all that, historical. But I just – I'm not going to do that with Auburn this year. I just think they're a different team this year. And and and, I, and and last week was a big example. You know, they had a huge that series with LSU was all saying Auburn, and they got clobbered. I just think there's a different Auburn team. They've beaten Ole Miss six out of seven. I do agree, though. I'm not really completely sold at Lane Kiffin, even though I did advise they're a great bargain in the futures uh, category at what two hundred to one to win the championship. Come on. That's uh, yeah, how do you not put a couple of bucks in Ole Miss seven three and one ATS last eleven as a road favorite, and and if and and we did stress it on the show, but if for some reason you didn't watch it, uh, just once again with teams like Ole Miss and LSU who are 150 200 to win the, to win the championship, if you think they have the talent, okay, and nobody thought they didn't when the season began, if, if you think they have the talent then don't don't put them in a situation don't knock them out of 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 your futures because they've got one or even two losses because they because for LSU yeah they got two that still doesn't matter and it doesn't matter because if they run the table if they win every game at the end of the season regular season they will have a very good chance Okay, of going to the playoffs, because the only thing holding them back would be if Ole Miss ran the table. So take them both. All right. It doesn't cost you much. Take them both. 150, 200 to one. And if one of them runs the table uh, or both of them run the table, but you know what I'm saying? One of them runs the table. It's all it's going to take. Then you are sitting pretty. Let's go to the Big Ten. Okay, everybody's talking about Ohio State and Penn State. We did the Penn State interview with Dustin Hawkins-Smith yesterday. So, of course, that's up on the channel. And I wanted to do it not only because it's a big game, but because I've been saying all year I'm backing Penn State. I think this is their year, and I think this is the game they prove it. Yes, we went over this yesterday, went over this with Dustin. There's a very likely scenario in which they all knock each other out, off, and then it's up to the rankings because – they're all pretty equal, Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan. So then you would say, well, you go with the home teams, don't you? All right, I understand that. But since I still believe in Penn State, that's my pick. I haven't swayed from it. Nothing has given me any reason to sway from it. I'm taking them. And I also am taking them because of the fact I'm getting five points. So um, let's remember this. Kyle McCord, everybody talks about the game-winning drive against Notre Dame. Hey, you know what? That's a big moment for him and all that. Okay, good drive. Here's the problem, though. That was the tough defense he faced this year. It was also his worst stats. He only completed 56% of his passes, no touchdown passes. And by the way, Ohio State, when was the last time we saw Ohio State at 93rd in the nation in rushing offense? 
So they don't have a rushing game, and they're putting all the pressure on McCord, who's not C.J. Stroud. And now they're facing Penn State. And I, and, and I saw a viewer from the play, Playbook channel that criticized the, somebody on the, on, the, on the panel about calling out Penn State's great defense. Oh, who have they played? Well, first of all, there's a lot of truth to that. But the way I look at it is you haven't done anything wrong, though. You knew you had a good defense. You're, you're number one in defense now after half the season. And you basically, not, I mean, it's not your fault who you're playing. Because there are teams that, if you take a look at Penn State's schedule, it's not the easiest schedule in college football. But their defense is just doing everything they're supposed to do. And really what it says is, is no, I mean, it's not, what it's not saying is, is that, oh, they got the number one ranked defense, so Ohio State, man, they're going to shut them down. No, it doesn't mean that at all. But what it does say is that they do have a really good defense. How good is it? Well, we'll find out on Saturday. And I'll tell you right now, I mean, this is a scouting network as well with our lads. Our, uh, Dave Seibertson and I will definitely be talking about the 2024 draft very soon. We could have been doing it already, but because of the, um, you know, the, uh, the possibility of, of an RLEDs channel, we're like, all right, if that's going to happen, let's kind of hold off. But we'll be doing it real soon, one way or another. The point is, there's more NFL talent right now on defense on Penn State. There just is. Okay. And boy, what a matchup. King against Harrison. That's going to be awesome. Um, but the trends, I'm not sure if I mentioned these. I did mention this one. And we, 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 should, we, we pretty much know this. Penn State has only won one out of seven. One out of the last seven against Ohio State. But they've covered six out of seven. That's the point. They're getting four and a half. I know it's not 15 or anything like that, but I'm still okay with it. And the big one says Penn State is 14-0-1 off back-to-back, straight up against the spread wins when they take on a conference opponent. Another big one you saw in there as far as uh, picks this week is Rutgers. Yes, my team. And I don't uh, put them up there a whole lot often, and nor should I. This is really not a – I mean, this is not about – as much Rutgers as it is Indiana. It's a kind of combination. The reason is there's two, two main reasons. One, Rutgers win this game, they're bowl eligible. And it'll be their first real time. They're, bowl, they're going back bowling with Greg Schiano in the second term. It would be huge. And they need it because they'll be playing Ohio State, Penn State, uh, Maryland after the bye I mean, these are just these. I mean, you're going to win those games? Probably not. And they also got Iowa. So could they win a game or two in there? Yeah, I think they could. I, I really do. I think they will. I think they'll win a game at least in there. But you don't want to leave it up to that. So take care of it. Because if you don't beat Indiana, then you got problems. And here's why this is the other reason and, and the biggest reason. Okay. Uh, first of all, Rutgers has beaten Indiana the last two years, including their last trip to Bloomington, 38-3. to Indiana has dropped three straight covers on the season. 0-10 against the spread as a home dog of 23 or less when they take on a, an opponent with a 700 or greater winning percentage. And head coach Tom Allen is 2-14 against the spread as a dog – with a losing record, okay, that's that's pretty bad. Two and fourteen against the spread as a dog with a losing record, and zero and seven against the spread in that situation when he's playing at home. Okay. By the way, you know who Indiana beat this year? Their their lone FBS win, Akron from the MAC, Akron, and you know what? Uh, they had to they had to squirm and claw and. To win that game? Yeah. Multiple overtimes. I think there were like five overtimes, seven overtimes to beat Akron. Okay? Uh, Wisconsin, Illinois. Now, this is big, of course. We saw what happened last week. Mordecai went out. out Iowa shut down the, the young uh, Brayden Locke, who didn't look all great. 50% completion percentage with a pick. He does get a, an opportunity to play a lesser defense and and get the reps but still i mean i i can't take this game when you got an unknown situation a quarterback plus illinois it's finally coming off a win which they haven't had since week one finally covering a game that they haven't done all season and there's two big 
uh, trends against them. Two and 16 ATS at home when they're coming off a straight up. No, actually, that's not the one. That's, that's actually, isn't that the Wisconsin one? Yeah, actually, you know, I'm going to take a look at this because here is where I'm going to take a look at it in the playbook guide. Okay. So, I mean, this is just too valuable for anybody not to have if you wager on a regular basis. I mean, if you, if you gamble or not on an average of even just 50 bucks a week on football, I mean, how do you not invest in this for the entire season? All 100 and whatever, 32 teams in college football, all 32 teams in the NFL. I mean, come on. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, so let me see. Is this uh, – let me see what this is from. Yeah, this is off of Wisconsin then. No. Again, that's not it. Oh, that looked pretty good. All right, let me get back to Illinois. So sorry for the uh, delay in this, but I just want to make sure – because this is a pretty significant one. Why I had this? Oh yeah, it is. What am I saying? I mean, I'm 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 just being really dumb. Okay, I was correct the first time, and that is that if you do uh, look towards Wisconsin and you think that they're a good play, and why not? I mean, they're a better team in Illinois this year. They just are. Illinois is only two and sixteen against the spread when they're at home when they take on an opponent following. A straight up against oh that's why I that that's why it wasn't because of it was Wisconsin it was Wisconsin it was because I had it coming off a loss I just I just did it again and they're coming off a win of course because they just knocked off uh, Maryland so let me just get that straight yeah oh, now I mean, it's, 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 yeah I think they've had that happen to them a couple of times but that doesn't qualify in this one. No idea why I put that down. So we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, get that out of there. So just disregard everything I just said there. Uh, I, I put so many of these in here. I do make mistakes, and that's why I always double-check them. I mean, I didn't pick this game. Um, and and uh, anyway, but disregard it. Fact is, I just think it's too much of an unknown when you're going to a young quarterback with, uh, with Wisconsin. Forget it. Okay. Now, let's get out of the Big Ten. Let's go to – actually, a couple more things in the Big Ten. Um, actually, just one more game in the Big – no, a couple more games. Michigan at Michigan State. A lot of people are wondering whether they should go with Michigan State. Is Michigan cheating? Uh, all that nonsense. Uh, Michigan State – we talked about this on the show. 2-1 and one straight up. 2-0-1 oh against the spread the last three years against Michigan. Uh, they upset Michigan in 2020 on the road as a 21-point dog. That's pretty significant. Uh, and everybody is wondering, hey, distraction and all this. And well, uh, look, it's not that JJ McCarthy. And by the way, I saw the uh, what DraftKings has him is still at like ten to one to win the Heisman. Would you get that out of there? I mean, JJ McCarthy has done nothing this year to warrant the Heisman. Michigan is winning this year because they're dominating as a well-coached physical football team. That's it. Very good on defense. Very well coached. Uh, and and that's just it's it's important. At this day and age, if you are a well-coached, oiled machine and you don't have uh, this high-flying passing offense, you could still do pretty good like they are. Now, I don't know and I don't think at this point they're a national championship team, though, because you're not going to beat the big boys like this. You can, Sooner or later, you got to start throwing the football effectively. And Right now, they just haven't been doing that. So, yeah, I mean, is Michigan vulnerable to be upset? I think they are. But... Is it going to happen this week? I don't know. Would I take a chance, throw a buck or two on the Michigan State money line in a parlay situation with maybe some NFL teams the next day? Yes, I would. Maybe I will. Minnesota, Iowa. I said this yesterday. I don't understand how Iowa is only a three-point favorite, especially because we do not know if Darius Taylor is going to come back. Now, Darius Taylor might be, and it was he was looking like he was going to end up as the best freshman running back in the in, the, in college football this year. He was off to a tremendous start in his first four games, 532 yards rushing. Then he injures his leg out for the last two games, and when you take that out of Minnesota's offense, I mean, they're pretty much like Iowa, okay? But we don't know if he's coming back or not, and that's the difference between me liking Iowa and really liking him. Like, if I knew, like, if I know on game time he's not playing – 
I mean, I go from this much to that much that I'm investing in Iowa. And again, I mentioned it. They've dominated the rivalry trophy games over the years, including the, the two this year against Wisconsin and Iowa State. Everybody says Iowa's offense is terrible, which it is. But you know what? Minnesota's offense, 121st. But what's the difference? Iowa's got the 27th ranked defense. We know they're a good defense. Minnesota's average, 65th. Iowa's at home. I just, I don't understand this line. I just don't. And throw in the fact that Iowa's beaten this team eight straight times and covered six out of the eight. Yeah, if Taylor's not there, definitely love him. If he is, still like him, but not as much. Okay, let's go to the ACC. Uh, stood away from the Georgia Tech BC game. Both teams are three and three. Got to really commend uh, Halfley uh, because BC off to such a bad start. And, I, and I'm sure there was everybody just counting the days before he was going to get fired. Well, they're three and three. Chance to go four and three on Saturday. So he's really done a nice job getting the, this uh, this team back. Both teams coming off a bye, but the big deal is the the Yellow Jackets, and and we we talked about this with South Florida. And and uh, uh, I, who was it also? There was another team we talked about it. I forget who it was. Where if you're not used to being a favorite, it, it's it's historically for a program, it's not good. And Georgia Tech is an example. They're they're zero and six. Their last six is as a favorite, as a home favorite. And and it's four and a half. I I'm, I just got and no, next week is North Carolina. What a huge game that is. I don't think there's a look ahead situation because we're talking Georgia Tech, not Florida State. Anyone, anyway, Georgia Tech has alternated losses and wins this year. And they're coming off a win. But they're coming off a bye now. So I would disregard that, me personally. BC is 8-1 and one against the spread with rest. After they covered and won a game like they did. But 1-7 against the spread following an upset win. Pittsburgh... Went to this kid, uh, Valu, at quarterback. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Still was under 50% passing. But threw a couple touchdown passes, didn't turn the ball over. More importantly, Devonshire, the DB, had a pick six, 86-yard pick six, I believe it was, or 84 yards, when they were up three late in the third, and that's what sealed it against Louisville. Last time Pitt played Wake Forest, they beat him in the ACC title game in 2021. Wake Forest 0-8 against the spread. When they took on losing teams from the ACC coming off upset wins. But I like Pitt because right now I'm just looking at it as Pitt got the win. Maybe that gets them looking like more, all right, you know, let's try to balance things out again because they got such a bad start. Look, Pitt's just a better team this year. That's why I thought when the season began. And so why not think that now, even though they're on the road? So I'll take Pitt in this one as a one-point dog because if they are going to go bowling, they have to win this game. They're going to be playing Notre Dame and Florida State soon. Uh, North Carolina, by the way, uh, should have no problem with Virginia. Uh, also, I believe that is also a night game. Speaking of night games, we talked about the two big ones, Clemson and Miami. And Duke and Florida State. Uh, what's really going to define this game, from, in my opinion, Miami's 10th ranked rushing defense against Will Shipley. As much as uh, Cl Klubnik has started to play better, he's still young. He still can be erratic and inconsistent. And Miami is just, I mean, yeah, you could say Clemson is also, they understand the situation. They got to win this game. They can't lose again. Maybe they could still get into the championship game of the ACC, but uh, I'm not buying it. Uh, I think Miami, I didn't like them last week. Okay. So I didn't buy into it last week. Still thought North Carolina was better as we talked about. And they were, and they won the game, but I don't look at Clemson the way I look at North Carolina. North Carolina is better than Clemson in my mind. So Miami now at home, um, I'm taking Miami. I don't think this is last year's team. I do believe in Mario Cristobal in Miami. All right. A big difference between what they've had and what he can do. And it's going to take him time to recruit, but he's a master recruiter. We've already seen progress. You know, don't wipe everything away because of some stupid call and or decision. And the fact that they beat Texas A&M at home, you don't wipe any of that stuff out. They've had a couple of, everything was going great. Okay, until they decided not to take the knee. But I think now that that one week has passed against a better team on the road, they're back home. That's why they don't win this game. Now there's some trouble. That's not with crystal ball, but just with this year's team. Duke and Florida State. So we talked all about that. Love Duke last week. 
We mentioned that. Got the job done, even without Leonard. It was about the defense. Remember, the young NC State quarterback? And it worked out perfectly. NC State, they couldn't do anything on offense. Well, that's why we, love, we like him this week. Because there is a chance Riley Leonard will come back. I'm not sure that's going to happen. I really don't. I'm taking him with the money line and all, knowing there's a possibility that he's not going to play. So I'm not going to be blindsided that he's not going to play. Last week, I was blindsided when E.J. Warner didn't play, and I picked Temple to win. But Duke, I'm, not, I, I'm still going with them. Now, obviously, I'm going to feel tons better if Riley Leonard's on board. But the defense, they're 16th in defense, 8th against the pass. That's what you need when you're going up against Travis and Coleman and Wilson. And I mean, they got, if you, if you I mean, I, it, it's possible right now. I don't know. I haven't looked at the whole landscape, but Ohio State, Washington, and Florida State. I mean, those might be. Maybe there's another team out there I'm missing. You want to throw it out there? You know, see what I'm, see who I'm forgetting. But just off the top of my head, those are the three teams with the top two wide receiver tandems in college football. That's how dangerous Florida State can be. Um, but we also talked about, and, and Mark had a great point, that last year Duke had three double-digit wins, upset wins, not covers, wins. And they're a double-digit dog here again. Uh, they've covered four out of six this year. The only one they didn't cover – was when they were leading Notre Dame late and Notre Dame just not backdoored, but I mean, that, you know what happened. So that was ugly how they fourth and whatever four they couldn't, they couldn't stop a fourth and 14, whatever it was. And then they would have, uh, they'd be undefeated right now, straight up and against the spread. So yeah, I think, I think Duke is a very strong cover. And the question is how much you want to invest in the money line. Big 12. So Oklahoma, Central Florida. Now, the, the, the current Big 12 teams are hammering these newbies, and why not? Uh, I get the whole thing. And C Central Florida, I mean, welcome, to, welcome from Group 5 to Power 5 because they are 0-3, straight up ATS so far in the conference. They had that terrible meltdown against Baylor. Uh, they got blown out at Kansas, and we loved that game, remember? Uh, and uh, they got blown out in that one. That was the last time we've seen them. Two and seven in their last nine as a road dog. That doesn't help. 82nd total defense this year, the Knights, going up against Oklahoma's top 10 offense. And the Sooners have not dropped a cover all year. So uh, w w why not go, go with them in this one? They've covered 12 straight at home. Okay, before they go on the road for back-to-back -back road games. 1-0 in that spot, by the way, this year. At Kansas, at Oklahoma State coming up, those are the two road games. It's going to get tough for Oklahoma. They've already got the big Texas win, but I, I think the bye should work, work well for them. I really do. They're clearly better than Central Florida, so 17 in college is not much when you're thinking about it in that respect. Now, Oklahoma State, beginning of the season, matter of fact, uh, we uh, th th this was one of the teams that we previewed. It's on the channel. You can check that out. And we talked about how Oklahoma State could be a under-the-radar Big 12 team this year. Don't. Gundy always seems to find a way, especially in, in when everybody is just kind of dissing them. But then they got off to a pretty bad start. I loved them against Arizona State Week 2. I was like, come on, man. They're, they're, they're going to be better than people think. We've talked about that. Here's this young coach, this bad, this, uh, this program that's going to take a while. And then they barely squeaked by. And I was like, Phew, glad I got out of that one. And then what did they do the next week? They lost to South Alabama. Good Sunbelt team, of course. Sunbelt champs last year, but not as good this year, South Alabama. They got blown out at home. Then they got, then they could lose big again. And it's like, oh, geez. Yeah. Not going to be good. But the last few games at home, upsetting Kansas State, upsetting Kansas. And they did it behind Ollie Gordon, the young running back. I mean, this guy's a really talented kid. Definitely somebody we'll be talking about real soon, especially on the scouting uh, R Lad shows. In his last three games, he's gone from 121, 136 to 168 yards rushing. 
So he's the reason they're winning, not some high-flying passing game. Oklahoma State's only been uh, on the road as a dog this year once, and they uh, lost pretty significantly at Iowa State. So there's that. West Virginia, they're going to come off the Hail Mary. How do they react? Uh, they snapped a seven-game series losing streak when they uh, beat Oklahoma State and upset them in uh, Stillwater last year. Uh, I, I'm just not, I can't take this game because I do, if, if you're going to tell me who I would take, I'd take West Virginia. But I've gone against Oklahoma State the last two, and they beat me both. So I, I'm, I'm stepping away. But it's not at home. That's why I, I'm going with West Virginia. I think they're a better team right now than Oklahoma State overall, especially since they're home. If this game was at Stillwater, I'd take Oklahoma State. That's why it's one of those things. I'm, I'm just – I'm not touching it. Texas is at Houston. Mentioned this one. Texas off the loss, by and all that. Haven't met Houston, in-state rivals, since 2002. Love it. Nice to see these two teams playing. Um, but it is a big point spread, and I'll stay away from that. In the other two Big 12 games to mention, Texas Tech might be down to the third-string quarterback, so keep that in mind. They're already down to quarterback number two, who was injured last week. Uh, so you gotta you gotta monitor that. Um, the big one though in this conference, besides Oklahoma, uh, picks wise, is TCU Kansas State. You know how much we uh, I particularly backed Kansas State. Mark has done it a lot as well, uh, not as much as I have this year. Still believe in Kansas State, but definitely have soured on them lately. Didn't like what they did at Oklahoma State. That definitely does mean. I mean, Mark was right. They're just not. Now, I, I think that I still think they're better than Mark does, but I I think I overrated them more and shouldn't have. Uh, their past defense just got obliterated in the offseason, and that hasn't helped. They can't stop anybody through the pass. And not having a, a bona fide start running back hurts. Um, okay, and all that. Here's the big deal, though. I think this might be the game that I want to watch more than anything this year, this week. Here's why. You've got the, maybe the future of the Big 12 at quarterback for these two programs. This poor kid, Morris, he gets hurt last year, loses his job to Duggan, goes on, should have won the Heisman. Gets hurt, gets off to a good start, gets hurt against BYU. And this young kid, Josh Hoover, comes in, this redshirt freshman, and all he does last week is go 37 of 58, 439 yards, four touchdowns, but two picks. That's that's big numbers. On the flip side, K-State. You know, Howard's been kind of banged up a little. I think if he was healthy against Missouri, they win that game. Talked about, said that before. But you lose to Oklahoma State, and now, hey, it's been – a month or two into the season, it's time to start playing this this freshman Avery Johnson we got, this four-star quarterback that Kansas State has. And I believe they've got someone with real potential special, real special potentially uh, at that position. Monster game last week, five rushing touchdowns, and he was eight of nine through the air. So they're saying they're going to split these guys, and I understand it. Howard has deserved it. But if this kid all of a sudden in his time that he plays starts to like really wow, I'm sorry, Will, but you're going to really start losing more and more playing time. Now, K-State's 11-4 and in their last 15 as a home favorite, while TCU is 4-11 and in their last 15 as a road dog. Obviously, you take the Wildcats, right? Normally, I would. I'm not doing that this time. Now, maybe I'll get backslapped uh, after uh, taking K-State as much as I have with climbing the last year and a half. But I just, I just don't see it. Now, what could happen? The young quarterback, he's going to make his first start. It's got to be on the road. That could be a difference. I just don't think it will be because, of, again, K-State doesn't have a good pass defense. This is the uh, Big 12 championship game rematch. TCU has a little revenge in there, I'm sure, if you want to throw that on top. Yeah, uh, I think this is going to be a really exciting game to, to watch if these two young quarterbacks go uh, head-to-head. So, bottom line... The fact that I'm getting seven is the reason why I really like TCU. And they're one of my top picks this week. And uh, like I said, I, I hope that doesn't come back to haunt me because there hasn't been many times I've, ta- I've gone against K-State lately. So, but yeah, I just, uh, I, I think this could be a real, uh, real fun one. <laughs> Look, this Avery Johnson kid, you can go out there and, and, and really, uh, really make things interesting. Okay. 
Let's move on to the Pac-12. And we loved Arizona last week, as you know. I mean, we had him as one of our top picks. They got it done against Washington State in, in just a manner which was just nuts, the way they just killed Washington State. Uh, Oregon should be okay in this one. And they know they can still win the national championship. So they just have to regroup because next week they're at Utah. Utah, speaking of the uh, Utes, they're at USC. I'm taking Utah. I've said this many times before. Anytime I believe one team in a short history has the other team's number and they've been the better team. And then that other team that's been losing all this time is the favorite. And then not just say a two or three point, I'm a seven point favorite. I think that's, I'll take that any day of the week. And I usually do like 95% of the time and it's worked for me. And that's why I keep doing it. So I'm taking Utah. I understand they got quarterback limitations. Nobody knows when Cam Rising's playing, if he's playing. Now, Mark Murphitz, well, maybe he should, uh, uh, you know, red shirt and all that. Here's the deal, though. Let's say they got they have a loss and they're, they're thinking, well, we're not going to win a championship this year uh, unless we run the table. So, yeah, let's do that. But I don't think that's going to happen at all if he's healthy. I mean, if he's pretty much cleared to go, Right now, if he's cleared to go on Saturday, they'll play him, I, I think. Why not? Because you're not going to burn your, your red shirt if you play a game. So go ahead and play if he's ready. Now, if you lose that game, all right, then maybe you should do that. All right, now we've got the two losses. We tried to have him come back and play. It didn't work out. He goes back to the bench. I could see that happening. Yeah, I'm taking Utah. We just talked about the Tennessee-Alabama Anytime we get these games where you think it's going to be a little bit lower scoring, got one really good defense like Utah, I'm going to go ahead and take the seven points. Of course, it's Utah defense, USC offense. That's what we know what this game is all about. Anyway, you saw USC's dropped four straight covers as well, so keep that in mind. Okay, uh, Arizona State, Washington. We talked about this one. We both liked Arizona State. They're coming off a bye. The 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 young coach uh, Kenny Dillingham, he's got something going there. They're starting to compete. You know they've. Cover two, they're 2 0 1 in their last three covers. They still haven't beaten any FBS teams. They're not winning on Saturday night at Washington, but Washington's coming off the game against Oregon. ASU's had a whole bye week to prepare and just, you know, just not get completely annihilated. That's why I kind of think it's going to happen. Uh, and uh, I look, and especially with Washington looking at, you know, I got Stanford next week. This is just going to be a couple of weeks where Washington is probably just going to, and especially if they get off to big leads, it, let's just rest our guys. That's what, that's what I would think they would do. How about this? Washington 0-5 against the spread as a home favorite of more than four when they take on a losing team. So there's that too. And I'm also taking UCLA against Stanford. And sometimes I'll play a game just because of the trend. Remember I talked, we just talked about the K-State TCU one. Similar here. UCLA, 6-2 and two against the spread. Their last eight is a road favorite. 1-0 in that spot this year. Stanford, 4-11 and 11 against the spread. Their last 15 is a home dog. 1-1 one one in that spot this year. They're coming off the big comeback win against upset win against Colorado. We've also talked about how that is a very tough thing to do, is when you have a major upset win, you know, one of these types of teams, the next game doesn't usually go well. Same thing if they usually have a upset near win because you're already stepping up your game. You're like a big dog, and then you play that big game. You either win it or you barely lose it. Doing it two weeks in a row, it's very rare unless that team is starting something. I'm not sure I'm not sure that's what we're seeing with Stanford. Maybe I'm wrong. It is 17 points, but I'll, I, I just think that if we take away – let's just remember they were down 29 nothing. Um, and, and maybe better teams would have buried them because they've been buried this year. All right, let's go to the group of five. And I remember I mentioned this, South Florida. I don't like them in this spot. They're a two-point favorite at UConn. They're 0-2, straight up ATS as a favorite this year. And get this, not only have they lost both of their games as a short favorite, they've lost them by a 112-49 to 49 margin. They just don't like this spot. They're just not ready for it. They're, 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 they're an up-and-coming program, but they're not there yet. Uh, meanwhile, UConn got their first win before the bye over Rice a couple weeks ago, and they've covered 10 of 11 at home 
off an upset win versus an opponent that has a winning percentage of less than 700. Uh, you know, if I took this game, I might take UConn. Uh, US, UC, USF is a better, is a more talented team this year, but I just, I don't know if they can handle this. And they are South Florida going up to the Northeast at this time of year. Now, I do like Texas San Antonio against, F against FAU. We talked about this. This is a big game, one of the better games in the group of five, but that's because Frank Harris is back. Mr. Conference USA MVP is back. But they are any American, AAC now, stepping up in competition a little bit, of course. Hasn't really mattered much. There's still a lot of people still believe they're going to be the team to beat. Especially when Harris is back, it might be the case. Um, they're also seven and three. Their last ten as a road favorite, one and zero in that spot this year. But FAU with Tom Herman, the the rebuild is beginning, or the transformation is already beginning. Tom Herman is 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 you can already see it, you can feel it. The Central Michigan uh, transfer quarterback Richardson had a monster game last week uh, against UAB, against USF. They blew them out. But this Lejante Wester kid is one of these kids that if he was playing for USC, might be a Heisman guy. I mean, this kid is electric. He had he had a, a 10, 123 touchdown uh, stat line last week at receiver and a punt return touchdown. He is ninth in the nation in yards, receiving yards a game. And overall, 62 for 622. So he's real exciting to watch. They're at home, FAU. They've never lost to Texas San Antonio 3-0. and Haven't played them in a few years. This is a different roadrunner team. That's why I'm taking Texas San Antonio. Not big, but I still I just uh, it's one of those interesting matchups. I, I just you know because this one's going to go down to the wire. And who do I trust more? I trust Frank Harris more. But we'll see. You know maybe these two teams play in the championship game. It could happen if FAU wins. There's no way it happens if FAU loses because there's you got Tulane. It would it would mean FAU is not ready yet. They were at home. This was their chance. Um, yeah, because that that's to me the deal. Because Tulane does not look like. I mean, they're they're still strong. I mean, Tulane will be in the championship game. All right. Uh, also, by the way, I'm in, I am taking Charlotte as one of those single-digit upsets this week against East Carolina. This is one of those situations where I'm doing it more because East Carolina should not be favored over any teams like this by seven points. I have absolutely loved what Mike Houston has done there. We talked a lot about it the last few years. They were a team I, I wagered a lot, just loved what they were doing, and it came through for me several times, big, big time. But they also disappointed a little bit. Didn't you know? They didn't get to where they really wanted to go. They were close, and then they lost everybody. Now they got to start from scratch, kinda, and that's why this has not been a good, very good year this year. Neither team has an FBS win. All right, but the difference is Charlotte has covered uh, all three on the road, okay, this year, and they're five zero and one in the last six on the road. East Carolina zero and three straight up ATS at home this year. And they've lost four of those straight at home. So I'm taking Charlotte in, 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 in a little mini upset there. In, and then uh, uh, rounding it out, you have Memphis at Alabama-Birmingham. Look, Alabama-Birmingham did not really um, – it, it wasn't a bad performance in losing to Texas San Antonio last week. They just couldn't finish drives. They were kicking field goals when they needed to score touchdowns. So – Still believe in everything that Trent Dilfer is doing there. If and, and maybe this is the game that they pull off the upset. Maybe I should have had him this week because they're at home. And uh, they're getting seven, so I'm taking the seven, not the upset. I'll, I'll throw a buck or two on the upset on the money. You know, maybe to see if I can get an early, early, early money line with a later game. I'll do that. The road team has covered four straight, so that would side with Memphis, even though first time these two teams have played since 2012 uh here's here's a big one though uab is 13 and 3 straight up 12 2 and 2 against the spread in the last 16 games when they're at home coming off a straight up loss now they're just one and one this year though and remember a lot of that was when they were a really good team so they would lose and they would rebound um but that's just something to throw in there okay now you've got aac versus mountain west 
and you've got the Air Force Academy and Navy. You got these uh, really commander in chief trophy games, these mil military academy matchups. Here's the interesting thing. Mark brought this up. He likes Navy. I like Air Force. He brought up the injury situation with Larrier, the quarterback for Air Force, is out. Now, that's true, and that could be a big deal. We'll find out on Saturday. I don't think it's a big deal. I look at the quarterback, Jensen Jones, who's coming in in replace of Larrier. He's a senior. He, he, was, he actually had most of the snaps, if not, I believe, all of the snaps in spring practice. So he was he, he was the guy in the spring. So they trust him. He's not one of these guys that they're going to turn to some freshman or sophomore with no experience and oh I don't know what we're going to do here. So I don't think there's that that's going to happen at all. And 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 this is Air Force. This is about defense anyway. And Navy is also dealing with a quarterback situation, injury situation. Now their starter may play. It's possible, but if he doesn't, that means. True freshman Braxton Woodson would get the start. And a Navy true freshman quarterback hasn't started since 2012 when the great Keenan Reynolds started. Navy's 0-2 against the spread at home this year. 1-5 in that spot in the last six. You have the third best defense at Air Force. You have the first best rushing offense. That is a great combination. Navy, we know Navy's going to run. They're always going to be top five in rushing offense. But 70th in total defense. So they're not going to stop Air Force, more than likely. Yet Air Force, I have no reason to believe they won't stop Navy. And they see this offense all the time. So they don't have to prepare for it. So, yeah, I, I, also, I just think and Air Force is just a much better team than Navy this year. Uh, Air Force is undefeated, and, and they've got big aspirations, and this is the best Air Force team I've seen in a long time. I mean, they, they legitimately should win the Mountain West right now. They are, without a doubt, right now, the best team in the Mountain West. And they've also won three straight against Navy. They've covered two out of the last three. They are defending Commander-in-Chief Trophy uh, champs. Now, let's continue in the Mountain West. Uh, you might be wondering, why am I taking Hawaii against New Mexico when they've dropped five straight covers? Well, first of all, the road team has covered six straight in the series, but that's not the biggest reason. New Mexico is 12-28-1 in their last 41 as a dog, period. Two and two in that spot this year is actually good. Uh, but as a home dog, 5 12 and 1, and 0 and 1 this year. And I just think Hawaii's a better team. So I, I, I thought they were a better team anyway. New Mexico started off as a two point favorite, didn't understand that. Switched over to Hawaii 1. Yeah, Hawaii is just a better team, I think. And then you've got all those trends work in your favor, except, you know, I know Hawaii hasn't covered lately, but um, I don't think that really is going to apply much here. Colorado State UNLV. You know how much we've been talking up the running Rebels for the past several weeks, and they just have not disappointed. 5-1 and one straight up, 5-0 and oh against the spread this year. Uh, this kid, Maeva, at quarterback, his last two, four touchdowns, no picks. That's what you want from your young kid. They've also covered eight straight off double-digit spread wins, and they're on a two-game run. Same thing. So they basically came in, I believe, at six. They've upped it to eight because they've been in that spot the last two weeks and won both times and covered both times. And I've had them both times, and I'm going to keep riding it. Why not? They're an eight-point favorite against Colorado State, coming off the Hail Mary win. Uh, we like Colorado State. Uh, we, we've talked about that. believe Jay Norville's got something going after the gutsy loss at Colorado. So, so things are going to be good at Colorado State, but I just think it's going to be a tough ask after the Hail Mary win, and it's a lot of emotion, and you gotta, you got to come back down a little bit. And now they're on the road facing a UNLV team that, you know what? I think they're better than Boise State. Isn't that crazy? Uh, we did not take the Utah State-San Jose State uh, game, and there's too much confliction here. Utah State's won 10 straight in the series, covered 9 out of 10. By huge margins, too. Okay? But not last year. Last year, San Jose State led late. Utah State still won. They scored a touchdown with like three minutes left. Uh, throw in the fact that San Jose State's the favorite. What do I say about these types of situations? But it's only four. And remember last week when we took San Jose State, we said that 
it's the schedule, man. Look at the schedule. We said the same thing with San Diego State last week, and we got both covers last last week. You have to take a look at those schedules. And San Jose proved that they were just facing tough teams. Well, same kind of applies here. Utah State's okay. They're, they're all right. But I don't know if San Jose State might be better. I don't know yet. Um I mean, Utah State, take a look at the teams they've played. We, we, we chronicled what, who, what San Jose State had last year. Utah State lost by seven to James Madison. Um, they won by 20 at, versus Colorado State. That's only Colorado State's only lost since Colorado. They lost by just five to Fresno. And don't forget, week one, they lost by 10 at Iowa. That's pretty impressive. Uh, matter of fact, their only bad loss this year was the game that we took them. Uh, I believe we had him as an upset in that one when Air Force beat him up. Head co- Here's the reason, though, that I stood away from it because I, I, I really would have gone with Utah State. Brett Brennan, the head coach of San Jose State, is 9-1-1 one, one against the spread in the regular season with this, with this team when he's coming off a double-digit ATS win. So I kind of just, yeah. If I was going to take it, though, I, I think I'd take Utah State. That's just too much. Ten straight wins, and you're the dog. So I'd probably go with Utah State in that situation because that's what I do. Now, Sun Belt. You look. I just love Terry Bowden, what he's doing there, and and I just hope he keeps. I hope he just turns that program around. I, I think that would be great. But he gets these upsets, and because he gets it, not only does he get the big double digit upsets, but he has been so close to winning others. Once again, I mean, he had. He had a last second loss to App State on a long field goal. Lost that one. Otherwise, they upset App State as a whatever, 17-point dog, whatever it was. They were in the same number spot last week. Led late. Gave up a touchdown with like a minute left. Lost that one. I think it was to Texas State. But what happens is, is normally then the next week, they're the shot. I, I can see that being the case this week. It's probably what's going to happen, but I'm just going to go ahead and risk it and take ULM plus the 550 at Georgia Southern because I was just completely unimpressed with how they lost and got beat up by James Madison. Uh, also, ODU is going to be, and, I, and I've had pretty pretty good success with Old Dominion uh, over the last few years taking them. Uh, they're a two to one money line play. I'm going that way. Oh, App State, 0 5 and 1, ATS last six is a road favorite. ODU was covered four straight. Uh, let's keep this in mind. App State, we know they're a really good program, but how good is this year's team? They had a big loss to North Carolina in overtime. Okay, that's really what we remember. And they should have beat Wyoming, maybe. Probably. They had the, uh, the sp- they gave up the special teams touchdown at the end. But they've only beaten East Carolina, Louisiana Monroe, barely, and an FCS team. That's it. That's all App State's done. So now they've lost to good teams, and ODU is not as good as those teams, but it's on the road. It's a big number. I would definitely take the seven, uh, but I'm going to roll the dice with the two to one. Georgia State and Louisiana Lafayette really like Georgia State in this matchup. How many times have I said it in the last year or two about how much I, I really uh, am impressed with Sean Elliott has done with this program? Uh, they're five and one this year, four and one against the spread. Lafayette had a very fortunate win against Texas State last time out. They should have lost the game, but Texas State just gave it away, gave it away at the end. They've never beaten Lafayette, the Panthers. Okay, they're 0-7 all time, but they've covered 4-1-2 in, 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 in those games. And they're 11-4 as a road dog Okay, against the spread. Flip side, Lafayette 1-6 against the spread at home coming off – a bye with rest. Lafayette's got to run the ball. They're a top 10 rushing team, but Georgia State is a top 30 rushing defense. So that's key. It's a nice matchup there. And a couple of trends that will also work Georgia State's way. They've covered six straight as dogs when they're coming off a double digit spread win and they take on an opponent coming off a straight up spread win. They've also covered seven straight when they are coming off a straight-up win of 14 or more points taking on a winning team. I'm getting four in this spot. I'm taking Georgia State, even if they lose, 
Uh, I still have a shot to cover that spread. And then finally, in the MAC, before we move it over to the NFL, we have uh, Western Michigan at Ohio. We did not get it. The, the, the upset last week was Western Michigan. So I'm going to go back to them because Ohio was coming off a loss. Maybe there's a, sh- a chink in the armor there. They get Miami at home next week. So maybe there's a little bit of a look ahead in the sandwich game. Uh, Western Michigan still impressively 13 and two against the spread as Mac dogs of more than three, um, two and one in that spot this year. Um, look, Ohio's a better team, but I'm still buying into this Lance Taylor, Western Michigan program, and they're going to build something and they got to get that win that, Hey, yeah, win, plant the flag, win. I know it's going to be tough. But like like Monroe, I'm just going to go back to them. And all I need is one of the two to pull it off to come ahead. All right. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we're taking Eastern Michigan as a 13-point uh, dog. This is a big game, by the way. Both teams are 3-4, and four, so they really, really need a win for bowl eligibility, of course. Uh, both teams have also won two out of the last three and covered three straight. Um Northern Illinois, though, 2-10 and 10 against the spread off a double-digit spread win. Okay, so there's that. I just – and Eastern Michigan's covered three straight. I kind of like that. I like that they're gaining some momentum after kind of a slow start. Uh, I was not going to go with the outright money line win. I might put a buck or two on that as a parlay kind of deal. But I, I, I'm going to go ahead and take the big points. Eastern Michigan, as we know, is uh, Chris Creighton, a you know, pretty good dog team. And finally – uh, the one of the better group of five games to watch this week is Toledo at Miami. We talked a lot about it on the show last uh, yesterday. Daquan Finn might be the best player in the MAC, uh, and he's having a really look. He, he's, he's been a big player before. He's, he's big player again. He's got wide receiver Jerwan Newton to throw to, who has nine touchdown receptions. That is tied for the most in the in college football. We talked, though, about the fact that one team, Toledo, has six, has six straight wins, but 0-5 against the spread in their last five. We have another Miami that has six straight wins, but has covered four straight. So a little bit different there. And Brett Gabbert has been a really productive quarterback for Miami of Ohio. Not the fancy Finn, but he does a really solid job uh, for the Hawks. I look at this, too, and I think Miami's better defensive team. Toledo's a, you know, they're not bad, but Miami's a better defensive team led by their linebacker, Solapec. He's a really solid player. And uh, Toledo also 2-8 and eight against the spread as a road favorite in their last 10. It's their third straight road game in three weeks. So there's that. Yeah, uh, I, I look at this and, 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 and I just got a feeling about Miami this year because – you know, both teams, when the season began, it was Toledo it was the best team. And maybe Northern Illinois, Ohio, or Miami would do something. But it just looks like Toledo's vulnerable right now. And because of that, now maybe they go out there and they'll go, hey, it's only two points. We were giving up 15 points, 17 points. We don't care about those covers. We were sleepwalking those games. Now we got a big game. We'll go out there. We're going to prove to everybody how good we are. That could very well happen. But... I think this might be the best team Chuck Martin's had. And we'll know that, I think, for sure on Saturday. If they beat Toledo and they've got the win at Cincinnati this year, I think that's going to legitimize that this might be the best team he's had and and not even maybe take the might out of it too. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for college football. So let's go over the NFL uh, to wrap it up here on the show. So here, let's see, we're going to eliminate the uh, picks here in college. Now, here are our NFL picks. All right. So, again, we got off to a good start last week. As we mentioned, uh, we took the first, what, five weeks off on purpose. We changed things around uh, our formula because it wasn't working the way we wanted it to. And we're off to a good start so far. Uh, So if you were with us last week, hopefully you took advantage. We went six and two. All right. And we only had the one top pick, and that was Jacksonville. And um, I wish we would have talked about this yesterday even though most of the time we will be talking on Fridays because uh, we did like Jacksonville. Um, I just could not understand why they were only, why they were the dog in the game. Had no idea. I, I mean, when, when I went over my notes, they were going into the game. They were three and zero straight up and against the spread in their last three by 85, 47. 
And New Orleans was 0-7-2 against the spread on Thursday night football versus a non-division opponent. They were 1-11 against the spread in their last 12 as, as a non-conference home favorite of, of three or more. And I don't know if it got to three or not, okay? But I'm not sure because it was three uh, for a little bit, um, which, again, I just I didn't understand. Um, so anyway, the, the fact is we really liked our, AFC too. It was AFC, NFC. I mean, just because New Orleans is supposed to be the best team in the NFC South, that what is that? You know, I think people uh, will, will finally start to realize that forget about what happened at the beginning of the season with Jacksonville, okay? I mean, everybody saw what they were doing at the end of the season, and they were a very interesting, hot team. And look, this this could be the team that the next really, you know, uh, team that's going to knock on the door with the big boys. They get up to the slow start, and everybody forgets about them. I mean, is anybody forget, forgetting about them now? Come on, man. Now, they almost blew that last night. Should never have been in that situation. They had the two early turnovers in that game. They, could, they were blowing them out anyway. And he let, I don't know what they did. Maybe they let, let the foot off the gas. I have no idea what happened in that game. But they should have just annihilated Northern, New Orleans in that one. And so, I actually, I went ahead because I, I originally thought. I said, hey, yeah, they probably should be a three-point favorite. So, I did the alternate line. And I was fortunate enough to get I, – I got five and plus 190 on the alternate line at Bavada. I said, sure, why not? I'll give you an extra couple of points of what I thought it was going to be, and I'm going to get two to one. I thought I was easily going to get that until – and, of course, very fortunate that they got the touchdown instead of the field goal, which I, I just didn't think after New Orleans tied the game that I was going to cover the five. I, I just did not believe that was going to happen. All right, anyway, let's move on because these are the ones that count. So uh, you saw my picks. You see where they are. And uh, let's uh, – I, I guess let's go ahead and start – let's just go chronologically. All right. Uh, Buffalo, 1 o'clock game against New England. We're taking the Bills, who have beaten the Patriots 6 out of the last 7. They've covered 5 out of 7. And the last 4 by a 139-71 to 71 margin. I mean, they have just bombed the Patriots lately by a 34 34- to 17 margin. They've outscored by 17 points in the last four games on average. So, yes, I have no problem giving eight. Uh, I think sooner or later in this little rut that they're in, they're going to come out of it, and I think this is the perfect time. You know, I think the Giant game was the one where they kind of let it out. They're coming back from London, and, and they got away with it. But now I think, hey, you know, we got the Patriots. And, and the Giant game might have been one of those, hey, sandwich games too. NFC team, bad team. We should win this game. We're at home. All that kind of stuff, but yeah, and, and not having Matt Milano, that uh, that's that, that's going to be maybe maybe a big thing moving on. But look, Patriots, even though they almost rallied last week, um, they were still looking pretty ugly, and 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 I just think Buffalo is going to continue to take advantage of that. I mean, I'll tell you right now, if Buffalo does not take advantage of that, then uh, maybe they're going to have some problems, Buffalo. So, but I think they'll get out of the little rut. And, again, eight's a one-score game. I don't think it's going to be a one-score game. I know a lot of NFL games are, especially division games. But until I see something like snap with New England where it's like, oh, all right, now they're looking more and more like a regular Patriot team, you know, even one without Tom Brady. Until that happens, I just – why would you take them? All right, I'm also going to a Tampa Bay against Atlanta. And, and this one is a simple uh, beginning of the season. You know I took the Bucs uh, to win this division. They were my sleeper uh, in the NFC. So far, it's going well. Uh, but last week, they had their clunker. They come off a bye. Look, a lot of that's coaching. That's top bowls. I mean, I didn't take the bucks because of top bowls. I'll tell you that much. But um, I, I still think they're, I, I think they're on level right now, even from what I've seen with Atlanta. And, 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 and so they're only given two, which means that Vegas believes Atlanta's better. I don't think that's the case. By the way, Atlanta has won just two out of five, and they're 0 and 5 against the spread in that run. The two wins by three total points. So they've been squeaking by uh, against the Bucs, who, who really had their number until at, Atlanta won in week 17 last year, they snapped a five game series losing streak. Uh, Tampa Bay has been a favorite at home just once this year. They won and covered against Chicago. Like I said, I mean, hey, if, if I'm like I did with Penn State, no reason for me to change the way I feel about the Bucks at this point, Baker Mayfield has got to play better. 
I think he had just that one bad game against a very good Detroit team. I think he's going to, and that's the other reason I like this game, is because I think that when you have that bad game off the bye, I think that you, you'll get that comeback. Um, we'll see. You know, I mean, uh, it's a long season, and maybe by the end of the season, I'll be completely wrong about the Bucks. Vegas winds up being one of our top picks, and how could it not be with uh, this uh, Division II quarterback starting for them? It's going to be an interesting story. A lot of people are going to be rooting for him. Uh, as Mark has said a lot, look, you get these rallies for the backup quarterback, and I completely get that. And that could be a danger zone for, El for, for Vegas with the backup starting, especially the Division II backup. But when you take Justin Fields out of the lineup, and, the, and that's the only thing that really makes it, and Justin Herbert, uh, Khalil Herbert, excuse me, that, I mean, come on. I, I mean, what are we doing here? And Vegas' defense has is, is, is really been pretty good. It's been what's holding them together. Crosby, as we know, is just a, a nut on a defensive line. But remember last week's crazy trend with Vegas when they were like 0-18 and, and we talked about that? Well, they covered. Needed a safety to cover, but they covered, even though they were beating it for most of the game and covering for most of the game. Well, here's another one. They're 0-11 as a road favorite against the spread off back-to-back straight-up wins. All right. Uh, but they broke that one last week. Maybe they'll do it this week. And when you looked at their road favorite number of 112 and one Against the spread, you go, well, why would I take Vegas? Well, here's why. The Bears are 3-11-1 against the spread in their last 15 as a home dog. Just 0-1-1 this year. So, Division II quarterback, I will take the Vegas Raiders in that spot. Detroit is another one of our picks, one of our top picks. We're getting three. I know Montgomery looks like he's not going to play. I think that is a big deal. That's going to hurt them, but it's just so with their defense, they're starting to come together as a more complete team. Baltimore, yeah, this might be one of those games. I mean, Lamar Jackson is really good in these spots as, as a short favorite and all that, and they're at home, and yeah, I get all that. But Baltimore, by the way, has alternated wins and losses all season, and they won last week. So throw this in, in there as well. They're 4-11 and against the spread in their last 15 as a home favorite. That's not very good in this spot. And here's something also that we need to take into consideration. I'm just taking a look at uh, something is just to verify it. But let's remember, and I don't know, Buffalo didn't go look too good with it, but Baltimore in London last week, and now they're at home. You know, they decided not to go with the week off. They decided to play. That could hurt them in this one. Uh, Detroit, 11-6 and six against the spread as a road dog under Dan Campbell. 1-0 in that spot this year with the upset win week one against the Chiefs. And even better, they've covered 13 straight off a double-digit spread win. And they've won three in a row in that spot this year. In their last three. So th three games ago, they, were, they had covered 10 straight. Then 11, 12, 13. Hey. I'll just keep riding the, the Lions in that spot who have won four straight, straight up and against the spread by a 116 to 56 margin. Can't take Cleveland unless I know Deshaun Watson's playing. I do not think that line's going to go up dramatically. I think it already has. It went from two to three. I think that's because it's looking like Watson will probably play. Maybe it goes to three and a half if he, if he definitely plays. Fine. Okay. I, I, I'll take Cleveland if he plays. I can't take him if he doesn't. I mean, they got the smoke and mirrors win last week, which just drove me nuts taking the Niners as my as my uh, uh, top play on Monday when they were only given four before the line jumped out. And I figured, oh, I've got him. I got him at four. This is going to be great. Then McCaffrey goes down and Samuel goes down. And it, it's just it, it, it was just ridiculous. And and then you got Shanahan, who if he was just drives his team to try to score a touchdown, not leave the, the, the game into the hands of a field goal of a rookie field goal kicker. Maybe I still cover the game. It, it was a disaster, but Cleveland's defense has been excellent. And that defense uh, should do really well in this spot against Gardner Minshew. Um, but I can't take PJ Walker again after he's already, he already got his ugly win. I just can't take him again. Uh, Cleveland, by the way, is altered uh, Navy, just like Baltimore. They had the alternating win losses too. So it might be working against them in this spot. But also, they're 3-10-2, the Browns are, in the last 15 as a road favorite, 0-1 in that spot this year. 
because uh, I don't want to remember the Pittsburgh loss, which I had Cleveland in that one big time, and they lost that game with two defensive touchdowns. So I don't want to be rem- I don't want to remember that one. Uh, Giants in uh, Washington. Washington has won two out of three and covered all three on the road this year. So that would say Washington. But and the Giants are eight and seventeen in the last twenty five as a home dog. 0-2 in that spot this year. So all of that says that Washington. but and, and Daniel Jones right now hasn't been cleared yet with a neck injury. But look at the difference with Barkley. Uh, that right there is – that's why I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I'm a little bit worried about that. Plus the Giants beat Washington um, and tied them last year, plus covered both games. So there's that. Yeah, I, I, and there's so much. They're so desperate to get a win. And maybe they're just after what happened last week. Maybe they deserve a win. So if I was taking the game, I'd, I'd take Washington. They're the better team. But I don't know. Uh, there's just still some things going on there that, that kind of I got a question whether or not the Giants aren't going. And, and I don't know. Washington going to keep winning all these road games? I don't know. We'll see. Arizona, Seattle. And I like Seattle minus the eight. I don't like taking Seattle as a home favorite. I really don't. Why not? They're, I mean, especially when they're four and nine. Well, this is why they're four and nine in the last 13 as a home favorite. Um, but they've dominated Arizona in this spot. They've won three straight, straight up and against the spread against Arizona by a 28 point margin. So that's about right. You know, um, they're also 17 and three in their last 20 at home versus uh, teams with a winning percentage of 400 or less who are looking in, at a revenge situation and then are coming off of back to back losses. So uh, throw on top of that, Arizona 0-3, straight up ATS, in their last three by a 95-45 margin. So it's starting to get ugly in Arizona. And Seattle coming off a loss. That's important. They got Cleveland on deck. They can't be wasting time with Arizona. So I like Seattle minus the eight. Pittsburgh and the Rams, this is one I got nothing on. I'm not taking. I got no idea about this one. No idea. I just uh, I, I still prefer Pittsburgh at home with their defense and all that. I don't trust them on the road against a team like the Rams. You know, Cooper Cup another week and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean the Rams are a three and a half point favorite. That sounds right to me. Not a game I'm taking. I will take the Packers minus the one against the the, the, the Denver Broncos just for the reason that they're a better team. That is it. And they're coming. They got a lot. They got the loss. The ugly loss. Love had a terrible game last time. They got the bye. So I think that in this one, you know, this 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 might even be their season. You, you you're at that point where you got to get Love's head right quickly. It's a bad defense. It's a team you should beat. And if you don't do any of that, I think the Packers are big time trouble, even in the NFC. Um, what's working in Denver's favor is that they have covered 11 of 17 as a home dog, but they're one and five straight up this year. Oh, five and one against the spread. A couple more games to go. Uh, on Sunday, and our top game, the Chargers and the Chiefs. Chargers, yes, I can't believe I'm making them my top game, but if I'm ever going to make the Chargers one of my top picks while they're still playing like this, it's the Chargers. It's the Chiefs, I should say, because if you just take a look at the numbers, they have covered five out of the last six against the Chiefs, winning two out of those uh, six. Last three in Kansas City, they've won two out of the three. In Kansas City, covering the last three. Overall, they've covered 10 of the last 14 as a road dog. Head coach Brandon Staley is 5-0 and in his career against the spread as a dog, coming off a loss. And in that spot, he's won four times outright. Okay, so once again, whenever Staley, whenever, well, let's just say the Chargers under, under Staley, Whenever they have come off a loss, a straight-up loss, okay, and they're about to go into a game as the underdog, they've covered each one and won four of them. So that is big. Uh, Chiefs, meanwhile, 1-15 against the spread in their last 16 as favorites of less than nine in the second of back-to-back home games. That is a big number. So you got one in 15 with the Chiefs. You have a Charger team that's won uh, two out of three in Kansas City and three straight covers. Cover 10 out of 14 as a road dog. And the Brandon Staley one to boot. And let's also, let's be real. The Chiefs are kind of like, like, like the Eagles lately. 
it's like they're they're winning, but it ain't pretty. Uh, and the Chargers just so desperately need a win. They just cannot afford another loss here. And this can turn their season over if they can get the win. So I'm, I'm, I, that's why I also feel good about making him my top pick. I've got all those trends working in my favor. And I know I have a team that is going to be out there desperately looking to win. And any time that you can not have to have that guesswork inside of you to wonder whether a team is going to be psychologically prepared to play a game, you know, they really need it. Not, well, yeah, you know, uh, don't really need the game or, yeah, this just wasn't our week. Uh, those, those are tough because you don't know. But there are a lot of times you know, but then you have to match it up with really good stats and sides and all that. And I've got that with the Chargers. It's just that, you know, when, you, when you're taking the Chargers as your top pick and going against Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, that's always a scary proposition. And I get that. Miami and Philly, and we're taking the Eagles in this one for one reason, two reasons. One, the Eagles coming off a loss. It's going to be kind of hard to see them lose back-to-back. -back. More importantly, I don't. this is going to have to be the game where Miami's going to have to prove to everybody that they are a complete team. They got annihilated in Buffalo. Uh, I know there's talk about sooner or later they're going to get you know their, their star cornerback, uh, cornerback back, uh, even though he hasn't played for them yet. And, okay, well, that could be a big difference, no question. Uh, but that's not happening right now. And the Eagles, uh, they have the offensive explosion of the Buffalo Bills. So we'll, we'll see. Because I took Miami against Buffalo. I was high on Miami that week. I was like, yep. I mean, look at the way they're playing. You know, this is their opportunity to show the Bills in the division that this is, this, is our, this is our division now. You know, we're for real. And they get the defense just did nothing. So that's, the, that's why. Not that Miami won't score, but will it be like the Buffalo game? And until I can see Miami defensively changing games like this, uh, then I, I'm going against them, especially when it's three points. So um, we'll see if they can change the narrative. And finally, forget about wagering on the San Francisco-Minnesota game, any of you guys, until you know what's happening on Monday. McCaffrey, Samuel, Trent Williams, all at this point, nobody knows if they're going to play. They're the three most important players on offense. You could not name a, 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 another player that's better and more important than these three guys. These are the top three. You've got top three, it's three these three guys on offense. Um, and uh, matter of fact, McCaffrey's one. And Trent Williams is a very close number two. Because that offensive line is a major question mark. And the only thing that holds that line together besides coaching, is Trent Williams. And if anything were to happen to him, you will see the Niners make a major deal at the deadline. And you might still see that just in case. Because they're not going to risk not winning a Super Bowl this year because something happened to Trent Williams and he didn't make a move at the, you know, at the deadline to have insurance. Uh, by the way, it, it, for, if you, if you want to go in with this, you, you can uh, and you hold this in the bank. San Francisco has covered 11 straight off of a straight-up road favored loss when they're taking on a team coming off a win. Uh, the Vikings wins this year, Carolina, Chicago. Their losses to four good teams, including Kansas City and Philadelphia, the Super Bowl teams. The line is seven, which is telling me that I think Vegas believes all three of these guys, especially McCaffrey and Trent Williams, are going to play. Otherwise, I'm not giving San Francisco, I'm not giving Minnesota seven if McCaffrey ain't playing or Williams ain't playing. I ain't doing that. Now, it's better because Cleveland's a better team than Minnesota. Plus, it's in a dome. You don't have to deal with the weather and all that, and I get that. And they're coming off a loss like the Eagles. But we're at that seven point, so it's a little bit tricky. Look, if these guys come back or if you think that McCaffrey and Trent Williams are playing, matter of fact, if Sam and Trent Williams play, I, I'd probably take I'd probably take the Niners, but I don't know. Christian McCaffrey, I believe we said this on the show yesterday. If you're looking for a really good futures play, you might want to look at Christian McCaffrey to win the MVP of the NFL. He's at fifteen to one, and I think he proved he might be the NFL MVP after what happened 
in Cleveland on Sunday. That is going to wrap it up. Let me know what you think about the show. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or any other suggestions or anything at all regarding what we're going to be doing here the rest of the season. Like I said, let me know what you think about the live uh, possibilities. Maybe we do that next week. I'm going to start doing more live programming, especially once we start changing things around with the channels and all that. I'll keep you guys updated. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. And uh, let's just hope we can keep going, though, with uh, the information that we're providing you. And hopefully you guys will take advantage of it. So have a great weekend, everybody. And we'll see you next week.